my choice is about it. Changes all the time. Huh? It changes all the time. Yeah, but you know, we've been doing this in 40 locations for 20 years now, so we kind of have the groove on how to set that up. But again, it's, it's based on each one. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I, know. <laughs> I wouldn't let you be here all night. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody else on the board have any questions? No. Laurie still. Do you have a question? I have one more. Oh, I get one more. If they say they're going with cafe services, how long is this for? Is this forever in a day, or if nope. say in two years they say we don't want to do this anymore? No. Nope. Are we then out of jobs, or you know? By regulation, um, the contract is a one con one year contract with four one year renewals. So each year, the contract has to be renewed. Um, at any point in time, the school district can choose not to continue with the service. Um, you know, that's really more of a you know school district and contractor relationship thing than necessarily the employees. Um, you know, because honestly, I honestly I don't know what happens to employees in that situation because I've never had it happen. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't we don't get thrown out of school districts, so I don't know how that would work, but. Okay. Do you, I have Go ahead, Judy. Do you um, do the background checks and everything as required for your employees as we would as a school district? Yeah, we do background checks um, regardless of whether the school district does it or not. So in a lot of school districts, the school district winds up doing it and we wind up doing it. And that's a school district choice. We will do them one way or the other if the school district wants their own done. Is, and we share that information with you. Mm -hmm. um, if the school district wants to do their own as well, then we do them. Um, they're your employees mm -hmm. um, and you have a director that's on site managing them yes okay if there's an issue with an employee um, if, if the school has an issue with an employee, how do, do we deal with you, tell you what the problem is, or how do we deal with employee issues? Right. Because they're going to be here in our building, mm -hmm. but we have no, um, I would assume we have no, the, the principal can't Authority. walk in and say, no you know, you can't do that, or you can't do this, or, or something. Actually, how does that work? Absolutely the principal can. Um, you know, really the way it works, and it's part of our food service director's actual review every year um, is a big discussion about how much of a member of the community, the school community, that person is in that role. Our food service director should not feel like an employee of an outside company who's in the building. They should feel like a part of the building. That's our expectations for them. Um, our staff should feel like a part of the school community. Um, you know, in which case I actually um, had an instance the other day where um, there was actually a school employee who yelled at one of the cafe services employees um, and the principal talked to both and you know I went down because that's part of my role is to come in on those situations too and I talked to the principal and he's like yep everybody's good and everybody went on with it well and I, was I wasn't even neat. I'm just thinking back to when we used to contract out our bus uh, services. We have our own bus services now, but we used to contract out our bus services. Mm -hmm. And there was always issues because um, they weren't our employees. We had to speak to the company to do, you know, to speak to the drivers. Right. Uh, so I'm wondering how does that work because there can be issues with that right. in a building. And, you know, really, like I said, you know, the way we work it is that, you know, these people are part of your community. And if the principal is having issues with them, somebody and needs to address them directly, he can address them direct. Um, you know, I make sure I build, a, as the district manager, I make sure I get, build a good relationship with the food service director and the principal so they know when that happens. They get me in the loop as well because sometimes it'll be a situation where I need to come in and talk to certain people. I might need to bring our human resource director, Jamie Matheson, in to talk to people. But, you know, your building administration will not feel like, oh, those are outside employees I can't talk to. They should feel like they are a part of this building. Mm -hmm. um, and if they don't, when we first start, they will after a while because we will get that right. And that's, okay. you know, that's the way we like to work. We don't like to work as an outside contractor who's, you know, there for us and we're a separate entity. No, 
we want to be part of this community. That's what makes our program successful. That's what makes us grow rather than have bad relationships with ships or whatever. The benefits, you saying full time is usually 37? I believe so, yeah. Um, but if we're looking at six and a half hours, that means that none of them would be full time. I so what would they get for benefits? Um, our part time employees get um, some sick time. Uh, they do have the opportunity to participate in the 401k. Um, they do have opportunities for life and accidental death and business mm -hmm. member of insurance. Um, they do have access to all the continuing education, that kind of stuff. They are able to collect unemployment um, during the downtimes. Um, and they are, you know, available to follow the training path that we have to advance to full-time positions, uh, salaried positions, all of that kind of stuff. So the four and a half hours, what do they benefit from? I'm sorry? No, if there's a four and a half hour difference from being full-time, and this, this would be considered part-time, six and a half hours. So <coughs> where is the difference as far as their benefits? They would have some, but would that mean they'd have to contribute more? No. Um, really the biggest difference for us between a full-time and a part-time is the availability of health insurance. Okay. So they would have or not have any? They would not have access to um, cafe services, health insurance matched, uh, like full-time employees. Just the director. They don't have access or they're not given it? Do they have access? It's not right? one of their benefits. But can um, they pay into yours? Can they, if they want to purchase I, it through yours, do they yeah, have I, access? I can't answer that one. Unfortunately, that if I had known, I would have brought Jamie, who's our human resources person, along with us. She's actually coming to one of these tomorrow night, but we didn't know this was going to go in that route. I can't have her talk to you about that, but I really, when it comes to the benefits, I've got the operational knowledge I need to know, you know, what. I think other I'd like to know an exact guideline, you know, what would be offered. I mean, if, if you're looking at having employees and telling them because of four hours they get no health insurance, um, I think for anyone today that's a very difficult situation. We don't have, well, we it. Don't have it now. Have it. What they'd be under. We don't have, have it now. now. And just because the law says that part time it stops at 35, doesn't mean his business has to do that. He can treat his employees any way he wants. If he wants to, if his employees are under the auspices of a 40 hour a week, you know. Then he has every right to offer them whatever he wants to. Yeah. But the food service director would have benefits, would have medical Yeah, that'd benefits. be a salary position. Yeah. Um, and usually year round as well. So. Okay, so we do. Any other questions? Well, thank you for the food and thanks for the, for the presentation. And no thank you. And Andrew, Andrew knows what all the differences yeah. are between these he three does. proposals. Okay. I'm also going to leave around some of my cards. You know, a few of you have gotten them, but anybody else? Great. Right. Thank you. Needs any other Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Great. Right. Take the samples, yes, too. The other goodies. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, that? no. That's it's different. What, what's in there? That's different. Cookies. 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 What was it that she was making? Potatoes. Sweet potato cake. Are those fresh? I mean, are those homemade? They're homemade. They make everything from scratch. And thank you. sweet potato. Uh, thank you very much. The cake was thank wonderful. You. Yeah, and sweet, sweet potato cookies potato and cake. all government issue materials are used to pretty make cool. this stuff. Okay. Visitors, PTA. Do you have a PTA rep? Um, I'm representing tonight's bond here. Um, all I can say is that today we held a special meeting to elect executive. Um, interim positions for president and vice president. President of PTA is now Tracy Fulkerson and vice president is Kate Beckwith. Okay. Thank you. Uh, minutes of the last meeting. Oh, Carson. Any corrections? <laughs> Next to the last paragraph. What page was? Page two. 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 Mrs. Nason also commented her concern. Maybe expressed her concern. 
Commented her concerns? Oh, that's what it's about. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're up higher than you. What do you want to change it to? Expressed her concerns. Okay. I have on the page uh, last paragraph of that. Um, it gives a total encumbrance and a year to date expense. I think it was an amount remaining. I don't think it was year to date expense. I think it was amount remaining. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, anything else? Two paragraphs farther down from what Judy just said. Uh, under the so SAU. We're on the next page. Yeah. SAU 64 report. Mm -hmm. This has been posted on the Paul for all the teachers. I don't know what the Paul is. That's their website. Maybe no. it's the. Um, Go ahead. It's our intranet. It's a, um, like a folder on the desktop for all the teachers that they can click into, and everybody can read. If you post anything on it, it goes school wide. So the Paul Internet. Or <coughs> it's or called the, internet? the, the Paul, It's intranet. the Paul folder in first class. If, yeah. I think if you said that. In our mail system. So just first class and. The Paul folder is Paul what folder. it's, yeah, it's just a folder. folder. Okay, so let me see. We didn't give it initials, so we figured yeah. we might as yeah. well call it something else, you know, some little name. What, no initials? No <laughs> initials for this one. Seven paragraphs after that. Committee reports or before that? Starts uh, just before, just before okay. committee Mrs. Mason report. Uh, under the one, uh, paragraph that starts, Mrs. Mason report. Okay. Uh, the last sentence. The committee will review the policy. Oh, the committee. Okay. Under the heading public comment, the third paragraph, which is very large. Yep. Uh, almost the end of it. Mrs. Olympia responded by stating an individual school board member, no S. Okay. So, cannot speak Next on behalf page. of the board. Uh, and, and the very last uh, three paragraphs from the end. Steve Brown does not believe the word workshop should not be used. I don't think should he, be. he either did or he didn't, but not <laughs> not two knots. Yeah. Probably cross out the second knot. Right. Should, should, be, should used. be used. Yeah. No, probably the first one, right? right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The second one. No, the first one. He wants the first one. He said it, so he wants oh. the first one. Crossed. Steve Brown does, believe, that one does believe the word workshop should not, not be used. used. Okay. okay. He just okay. said believes instead. You know. right. It's just so me. That's, I, that was the last one I had, too. I had to go. Okay, can I have a motion to accept amendments as amended? So moved. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Old business. Um, I didn't know if it was under old business or not, but I'm okay with the new um, expense report format that Andrew had set up. He had asked us to look at it. And I had that on there too. All right. I'll just tell you. Can we have a consensus yeah. that we're all set with that? Yeah. Anybody object? This is is the that new, all right with you? The new what? The new expense, 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 expense report, report, report from format. The draft. Format. Yeah. From the draft. Oh, okay. Any other old business? Um, We decided that we're going to the Crow meeting as a board. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe you should just announce it so that. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll be going to the Crow meeting on May 7th, 7 o'clock at the Good and Tasty Restaurant as an entire board. We've got uh, information from a free school board uh, attorney and he said there was no reason that we couldn't go and talk to the public and as long as we, we posted, posted the minute, which is, uh, I mean the meeting, which has been posted. So we will be there. Thank you. Okay. With the restriction that we will not discuss personnel issues. I sent, yeah. Ralph, did you get my email? I didn't get the email, yeah. Okay, so you know what the parameters are. Should I save my comments for public comment area? Or? That's fine, why don't you say that? Wait. Okay. okay. Uh, any other old business? Correspondence. Do we have any correspondence here? <coughs> well, can I? What? Um, whether it's either old business or correspondence. Okay. Um, I've asked um, a number of times now for the information that was relayed to me, and I have yet to receive it, and I'd like to know when I'm going to get it. What information would that be? That would be the information that was, uh, that I was told that precludes my rights as a board member. And I've requested this on a number of occasions and I, I have not received it yet. I don't understand so. what you're saying. What did you, what did you ask for you didn't get, Steve? Um, there's apparently an RSA that precludes my rights as a board member. Precludes your right in what, I don't know, in what respect? In respect to the um, the principal's position, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know about. what you're talking about either. Is this something that should be discussed in non-public? Well, I, I'm. I don't think an RSA is a non-public okay. issue. So you you requested an RSA and you haven't received it. Yes. In relationship to what? The principal's position. Who did you request it from? Uh, all of you. Not me. Well, you were sitting here when I asked for it. I don't know what it is. The, the uh, initial well, meeting for new board members, it, they passed out several multi-paged issues, and, and one of them were the duties of the school right. board members. Is that what you want? And in, in those duties, I have not. I have it speaks to, uh, you know, things, that, no, should I, be, I, yeah, things no, that should be private and things that could be public. And among the things that are private are personnel, such as the principal, and all of those should be are categorized as non-public items. You can speak to your heart's content at, at a non-public uh, well, I, I, I did, this was in reference to supposedly a specific RSA, and that's what I'm in. I've requested it on a number of occasions, and I've yet to receive it. It may not. Right, could you request it again? Because I'm not. I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Now you have five days. It, it may not be an RSA. It may be uh, a state school board of education regulation. Well, you, Mrs. Olympio, stated that it was an RSA. No, that was in. Uh, we were discussing what I had said at a meeting that if you wanted to change a certain action that had been taken, I said in order to change that action, a motion would have to be made by someone on the prevailing side. That's correct. And you had right. heard previous, but we got that straightened out. Do you have that RSA? No, and it may not be an RSA. Well, th then where, 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 where does it say that, and who said it? And I want every single piece of information that is relevant to that. To the fact that uh, any action to be changed with, yes, with because any action that has been taken by a vote okay. can only be changed by a motion from someone on the prevailing side. That's what you want to see. Yes. Okay. Okay. We'll discuss it. Okay. Anything else, Steve? 
we'll try to address your wishes and get you the information you want. I hope so. I don't have any. Okay. Liz, I know you have to leave uh, 8.30. Is there anything you would like me to move off, like policies? No, <coughs> I may be able to change it to that. I'm, if I can step out for 10 minutes around 8 o'clock, okay. I may be able to do it by phone. All right. Okay, great. Then we'll just go on. Okay. Curriculum coordinator's uh, report. Anybody have any questions? The late 18th, wasn't it today? Yes, today. It's the 18th. Yeah, okay. did the middle level, level math teachers meet today? Yes, they did. Yes. And do you want me to mention what we discussed at that meeting? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, we have a math committee that's going to start looking at K through 8, the curr math curriculum for next year. But in the interim, we've looked at some supplemental materials through um, the consultant that we have. Since we didn't make AYP this past year, we felt that it would be good, especially from 6th, 7th, and 8th, to kind of beef up their curriculum a little bit. And with um, Mr. Lukasiak, he's brought a bunch of materials in, the committee's brought a bunch of materials in, and they've decided on some supplemental materials to add to the curriculum for, um, uh, for this next year. And that, in turn, will help them while this committee is deciding school-wide what kind of curriculum they're gonna go with. Um, the supplemental materials will kind of guide them in what's working and what's not working almost like piloting some of the stuff so that they understand it a little more. When you come in and, and you have these uh, companies come in and display their wares mm -hmm. and everything and, and they can razzle dazzle you into everything but whether it works in the classroom right. is a different right. thing. So my suggestion to them was to look at several different things and then try to get bits and pieces from each of those <coughs> that you think would work and actually use them mm -hmm. to see if they work before they spend all that kind of money. Um, so we, they've uh, uh, come with a proposal of some of the things that they want. And I told them to try to get it to me by Friday, but to stay within you know a certain budget on on those materials. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the big thing that I would want to say is the Common Core is coming in two years, right, right. and so. Yeah. Um, companies are scrambling mm -hmm. and buying and developing a lot of right. things. So you don't want to really invest in something right. today. Right. right. You warned us of that. Right. That's, I'm not going right. to forget. Okay. So um, Rob Lukasiak, the consultant that they've been working with, has been looking at the Common Core, what we're missing, the holes in our curriculum mm -hmm. from the Common Core to what we currently have. And mm -hmm. so I know they've been working closely on that. Plugging holes. Yeah. So in our um, expense report, it's in, we have money in the textbook mm -hmm. line. And so that's where it would come from. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Because yeah. it's supplementing the, the textbooks. And I think materials. that's a great idea. Yeah. I like so. it. I think that should be a process that you guys do in the future in, when you're looking at different curriculum is, you know, the year before you're going to look at a major curriculum, pilot some different things and have them bring them in and have the teachers use them first and see what works and doesn't work. Not so a bad idea. I think you'd save a lot of money. Mm. Okay. Any, anybody have any questions on the curriculum report now? Okay. All right, special ed report. Scott. Any questions? Uh, the total, if they were all individual assignments would be 114 students, but is there some overlap? It varies from month to month. Um, your October 1 report, which is for state, was 126. So it varies. Okay. Um, but are these all individual these and are all sole individual students. and sole assignments? There's no double assignment for any one student. Correct. All right. You mean like a split? Yeah. Like a half here, half there? No. 
questions or Scott? How long did your feeling last? <laughs> well. Are there any other questions or Scott? Uh, principal's report. Alrighty. Um, school program is listing on the fourth grade of Hunter Brewster Academy today. Um, they're going there one other time next month, too. They're doing some different things on that, and I've asked Maria Bowen to kind of write that up so she can give you guys a. What are they doing? Room. What are they doing over there? You know, honestly, I can't say what they were doing today at Brewster Academy. Mm -hmm. I have it on my desk. Um, but it's related to the curriculum, you know, Maria Bowen, she's going to link that like that. But there's something that they did today, and then it links to something they're doing in May, too. So I asked her to write it up, and I figured she could write both of them up at the same time. Um, the Camp Calumet informational meeting was tonight. And on Friday, we have our fifth grade English tea that you're all invited to in the afternoon, if you would like to come. Which I'm saying. That's an all, right? working on that all week. <laughs> So, what time will that be? I'll email you the exact time so that you know. I, I know they. I know it's sometime in the in the later part yeah, of the afternoon. I think bad. it's two. I want to say two. Yeah, that's why I thought I wanted sure to make sure it Don't wasn't one thirty. We should go and all wear hats. Well, well they're, they're going to wear hats. They are. It's their Sunday special because yeah. they were making very fancy yeah. hats. Yeah. Yeah. They're making a talk hats. Yeah. Yeah. It's Friday. Friday. Yeah. Friday. Uh, school vacation is coming up, and they're all looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, fourth grade is going to Strawberry Bank in Portsmouth on May 4th, and our international fair has been set for May 9th. Fourth, fourth grade is very busy. What's that? Fourth grade is very busy. Well, you know, I stood up at a, at a staff meeting and said, you know, you guys have money in your lines and the staff activity account for field trips and things. Mm -hmm. Let's get some field trips going in here. And boy, some of them jumped on it better than others. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're getting busy. I also think that fourth grade, it's because it's New Hampshire. It, it's right. Yeah. So there's so yeah, many straight. things there's right so many things here that you can do, like the, you know, going to the state house. Mm -hmm. and yeah. 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 Students of the month for February and March. Um, I'll go down the list. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hunter Truman, Elijah Peters, Olivia Gerlach, Christodier, Tessa Cameron, Chanel Kenny, Jonathan Bashelder, Sierra Kimball, Marissa Ross, Aiden Phillips, Troy Douglas, Tess Hicks, Emma Olette, Michael Elliott, Julia Morgan, Madison Catro, Brian Pump. Hummonville, Matthew Ritter, Jamie Woodward, Peyton Lee, Sarah Smith, Brian Bigda, Nick Nason, and Tanner Long. Congratulations. Yes, good job. Um, pennies for Patience. Um, Deb will give me the exact number. They were finishing that up when I was writing this, and I think it's just a little over $500 they collected. Kindergarten registration went very well. The workshop was last night. The parents were very happy. Uh, like I said, our international fair is coming up. Um, chickens hatched in two of the kindergarten classrooms. <laughs> uh -oh. And by the time you read this report, we'll have ducks in the third grade. We do. There's six of them. They were ducks in kindergarten. Today. They're so and lazy, they're aren't they? Whacking away. So, anybody interested? <laughs> <laughs> it is part of the FOSS 2 by 2 science curriculum where they learn that. And the kids were fantastic. The, the, we couldn't have timed the chickens hatching better. Um, they started pecking the night before, and it takes like 12 hours. And the next morning when they came oh, in, the chickens great. were coming out. Um. So it was really good. And the, the duck, the one duck, I, I have to tell the story. The one duck was like from the Disney's uh, Donald Duck cartoon. It had broken the, the shell all the way around in a circle, and the kids were standing there watching it. All of a sudden it just punched the bottom of the shell out and its little feet were going like this and it looked like a normal duck cartoon. It was so they laugh. Their, their giggles are beyond. It's so funny. Mrs. Bemis had her baby. Uh, his name is Brent. He's seven pounds, eight ounces and twenty inches long and Mrs. Quartz is out and, and ready any time. Oh, wow. The staff is trucking the Himalayas as part of the 
our health and wellness program and under our medical insurance. So you'll see everybody wearing these little things on their shoes all over the school. 